So what I'll tell you is, essentially, what are web presentations for? What can they do? What can they not do? Give you a tiny tour of the free features. This tiny tour is going to be a rush through of the things you can do, a few of them at least. Why is it just a rush through? Because when I created this, it was meant for 45 minutes. Today I have 25, so it's going to be super fast, but there's a tutorial online, the presentation is online, the source is online, so you can learn from that at your own pace then. I'll point you to some resources on how to get started, the video tutorial, and as I said, the source, and I prepared a starter package for Slidey users, and then close with a summary. Yes, but 20 are for Keith Andrews. That's why I'm actually doing it in English, because he asked to do it in English. So let's see. Uh, programs, powers, and purpose. Uh, there have been historically very many tools to create web presentations. I think one of the first worth to be mentioned is Opera Show. I did work for that company, but that's not the key reason. It's uh, because they started the concept. They created CSS media styles. Uh, in their consortium, in the W3C consortiums, pushed for media-style presentations and have been the only browser that supported the presentation style. So you could make something which had style presentation. Uh, Opera would go into full screen mode, switch to presentation style, and you could do it with a few lines of pure HTML and CSS. You can do, as a non-technical user, Google Docs. You can do Prezi. All of these have certain advantages and disadvantages. I do W3C Slidey. Why do I do that? Because I'm a control freak to some degree, which means I want my code on my machine, I want it in my repository, and I want it to work whether I'm online or offline. That's one of the things. And I want it to be able to work with any other tool, or as many as possible. And Slidey was quite popular, or is still quite popular, and has many different forks. One of them is R Slidey, responsive Slidey, which is developed at the TU Graz by Keith Andrews and his students. And Keith will tell you a little bit about R Slidey in the second half of the presentation, hopefully. And uh, I'll start with Slidey. There are other alternatives. Uh, important ones of the older ones is S3. Uh, more current is impress.gs, but there are so many alternatives. Simply look them up on Wikipedia. I'm not going to click the link because I only have 25 minutes today. You can see one of the features right away here. This little counter saved my hours pretty many times in the past. I know how much time I have at any moment of my presentation. And of course, the audience knows 20 minutes still, that's not worth keeping away in case needed. Or the other way around, it's just 20 minutes. Ah, I want to listen to all of it. Uh, I know at the same time where I am in terms of the slide number, 5 of 25, and we are at 22 minutes out of 25, so I'm kind of on track. Creating multimedia presentations is the key purpose. What does it mean? We can do audio, video, we can do anything the web offers. It's essentially a regular website. It's available to a wide audience. Why? Because you can look at slidey presentations on your laptop, independent of operating system. Of course, Linux is the nicest choice, all of you know. Uh, you can also look at it from your tablet PC, whoever manufactured it, from your cell phone, and so on. It's available to anybody who has a web browser with JavaScript enabled. It does not require anything non-standard. It does not require a closed source. I'm not dependent on anyone. And it has happened that it had bugs. Then you can just fix them in case needed in the newest version. And yeah, it's supported anywhere by anyone, really. And you can do anything you can do on a website. Downside is, if you can do anything you could do on a website, you should kind of you need to know what you can do on a website. So you need some HTML, you need some CSS, some JavaScript. If you want to go bare bones, slidey, some HTML is totally enough. You take a template, you copy and paste the existing slides a few times, and you've done your own first slidey presentation. It allows for real version control. I mean, what you can do on Google Docs going a bit back and forth is kind of nice, but what you can do with Git is so much better. So since it's all text, you can do version control. Very, very nice. Full control and flexibility over everything a web has to offer at the cost requiring the skills. However, the key limitation is it's a presentation tool. If you want to make something that is uh, watched kind of unattended, then do a website or make a video tutorial. If you make a presentation, then make it for the, for the purpose of making a presentation. So simply putting it online, why would you not then make a web page directly? You kind of understand what I'm trying to say here? Okay. 
So, excuse me? Yes, yes. Of course, I put that online. It is online, and I keep updating it, like all my presentations, so they can be found, they can be indexed by Google. Of course, it works. So if you have attended this session, and you want to look it up, you will probably find it with a few words inside Google. And then you can look it up, you can look at the source, and it perfectly works. It's just if you haven't listened to it, it's kind of not the same thing, because it's, it's made with few keywords instead of longer sentences and so on. But of course, I created a video tutorial, so uh, at the end, you can go for that. So what can we do? We can increase and decrease the fonts. I made a, I don't know if it's easily readable, a, up this B and this S is emphasized. I can do B for bigger and S for smaller, which is quite nice, depending on the content of, of the slide and on the projector, on the audience, if you have a small room, or let's say you have a large room with older people, a small projector, you may want to increase the font size. If it's a full HD projector, you almost always want to increase the font size, and so on and so forth. So you can do that dynamically. You can show details if required, which is quite nice. You essentially, you say what you intend to say, and if there are questions, you can simply click on this and some more details unroll automatically. I like that feature. What else can you do? You can do Control P and print the whole thing in a nice PDF. There are print style sheets for it, and you can simply adjust the print style sheets the way you want. It takes about two or three minutes for this mammoth presentation, so I'm not going to show it right away. You can try it out at home, but the print style sheets I do not take care of really well, so it comes out, but it doesn't look too nice in, in my case here. You can do incremental images and video displays. You can do anything you could do with HTML5 if the browser is supported. You can link external content in various ways. You can uh, make the, the presentation based upon any Python website or PHP websites. You can share content between presentations, generate stuff dynamically. I've, I've done a few examples. So number one here is a simple picture. You can do a simple picture. Nice. Done. Next. You can do incremental images. These incremental images here, now we are on slide 10. They are super simple. I have a few SVGs, one per slide. That's incremental. It's a kind of a workaround, so we are on slide 10 now. This is slide 11. All right. Or we can do it on the same slide. Now we are on slide 12. I'm going to build on that slide one more, 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 another image. This is a vehicle routing algorithm from my PhD. Simply explain kind of how it works. You can tell your student how an algorithm works if you make it step by step. All right, so we can do incremental images. What else can we do? Only a few minutes here. Mathematical formulas. Technicians and IT people love formulas. So you could use, of course, later. Thank you. Later is nice for mathematical typesetting. Let's just dive into it. You can do more complex stuff. You can download MathChex. It's a free GS library. And you can simply typeset the way you typeset in LaTeX. It's nicely rendered in all browsers. It even works in this horrific abomination that IE is, even in older versions, because MathChex has symbols as small pictures. So it does support older browsers, but newer browsers are supported by automatic conversion to MathML. Pretty neat. We can do a bibliography if needed, have some sources, give credit. We can link external content. We can, or well, one thing I do a lot when teaching Python, I have a few Python files, code files, which I can automatically, of course, run to check that they are correct. I can throw them in PyFlakes or PEP8 to make sure that the Python is, is proper and clean, and then not copy and paste back and forth to the presentation, but simply tell, dear PHP, read that Python file and show it, and dear whatever GS prettifier you want to use, uh, show it in nice syntax highlighted style. And of course, we can also link to external tools here that, once loaded, show the execution of that code nicely, step by step. Oh, that's too small. Fortunately, we can make that bigger. And we can go step by step through that code. Neat. I like it. Let's go back. What else could we do? Oh, we could have video tutorials. In this case, it's a simple external link. We never leave the browser. I click on it. And here's a video tutorial on some kind of mathematical function thing in Python. 
a link. Everybody can do a link, but we can do better. What can we do? Python Anywhere is a live Python shell on the web. And of course, you can do Python Anywhere inside your slides. So I can, oh, come on. You should have a better cable here. I blame the cable. Did work in the other room today. Oh, here we go, back again. So I can just do anything I could do in Python. I do import os, os dot, get my feature completion and so on. I can change that font size. The people at Python anyway are quite nice because they didn't have a Python 3 shell. I just asked them to put one online for my talks and I did that. And they're even nice enough to say, uh, let us know if you give a talk. We make sure that we don't do server maintenance there. So kudos to them. What else can we do? Um, this was a way here, you could enter f uh, a formula and then pass that data to, to a small Django website which would render that formula to the slides. I've gone away from that because I don't like the old style of doing graphs by generating a P PNG and showing that. The newer way is really data-driven development where you have GS-based data, so this is a graph showing GPL usage over time. You can say, I'm not interested in the LGPL, I'm not interested in the GPL, let's just remove a few of the bars. And actually, I'm not interested in, in uh, how many percent each of these, uh, of these uh, licenses has over the year, but I want to know the aggregations. I can say, instead of grouping them, I stack them. These live presentations here are done with D3. It's a super nice JavaScript library, which works nicely together with Slidey. Um, there you have to kind of go into the detail because the rendering would take place when you load the, the presentation. However, the slide is not there. If the slide is not there, D3 renders it and it's sort of very small. So what you need to tell is, dear D3, start the rendering only when the slide opens and Slidey has a, has a nice callback functionality for that. So you can say on a slide, do external JavaScript just now. What else? Oh God, I love videos. What do we have here? It's somewhere online. Ah, this is HTML5 video. If you're not too certain that, that your customers, your audience can do HTML5 video, then don't use HTML5 video. We can also, of course, I'm gonna stop it even though I love that movie. We can make an animated GIF. That's from a video tutorial for my students and also works. Actually, it's a small hint, animated GIFs even work in uh, proprietary, usual, uh, or more common presentation tools that many other people would, uh, would use. So these are quite nice. You don't need to worry about codecs or anything about browser versions. If you get bored during your presentation, let's just play some HTML5 games. Yes, yes. That's where I usually get caught up the longest, but let's stop that because we run out of time otherwise. What else could we do? We could be hired by a firm. In this case, say, assume I work for Bitbucket, I give a customer presentation, and on the slide I have the system. I show off the system, I show what it can do, I explain the features and so on. It's a simple iframe, yeah? The simple iframe, though, has a disadvantage I cannot go back and forth between the presentation and the iframe. The iframe is on this slide. If you have the iframe with Bitbucket again and another slide, I start from scratch, okay? So that's, that's not quite as, as neat. Is there another way to do it? Of course there is, because it's slidey. I actually had to change this just today because usually I show OpenHub with nice uh, statistics, but OpenHub is offline today, which kind of prevented the presentation of loading. So I could give a product demo, assume I work for GitHub. Then I can say, I'm showing off some GitHub stuff. Explain the feature in the presentation. And go to GitHub. Then say, oh dear GitHub, sign me in, sign in. All right, go to the presentation again. Explain some feature. Then, even on the next slide if necessary, say, I'm gonna show you now about the notifications feature. Click on it, and I'm back where I was. That's uh, I'd say a rather useful feature, and click on the notifications feature, demo it live, and say, now back to the presentation without ever leaving the browser. I'm at my presentation. I explain how pull requests work on GitHub. Oh, they are so awesome. Let's click on pull requests and show off the feature pull requests. We always 
can continue the product demo, the web product demo, where we left off, and go back and forth between the presentation and GitHub, or any other tool you want. It has, just has to be web-based. How to get started? Still 10 minutes left. Oh, that was fast. Let's hope for, for uh, Keith to show up eventually. <laughs> All right, resources. Actually, they are not really nice and huge tutorial pages. There's Dave Raggett's presentation about Snidey. <coughs> Let's open that one here. Uh, this was what got me started with. Uh, Dave Raggett works for the World Wide Web Consortium, and he created Snidey. He is also happy to hear about uh, some feedback, bug fixes, feature requests, and so on. Uh, and it's still the official tool inside the W3C, though it's not very actively developed. However, it was done so well. It's pure, very beautiful JavaScript and CSS that it doesn't need much maintenance. You've seen the features are essentially endless. You can do any, anything you can do on the web. And he tells you about a few p uh, features and how to get them done. What else? You can look at this presentation source code. Go for Control U. Doesn't hurt. Let's zoom in here. This presentation is a bit of overkill, so it's, it's getting long, but if you're interested in how did he do this slide, which JavaScript did he do, just scroll at it, or of course, you can do F12 to get the browser debugger tools and say, I want to know about this particular line, click on it, and then the debugging tools will tell you exactly what's behind, which CSS does it, and so on. So I told you, some web skills are kind of useful the more you want to do, but you don't really need them, because there's a nice video tutorial online since, I think, about two years now. Um, not too many views, but at least 300 people. And in that video tutorial, of course, I speak on it as well. I do a small step-by-step -step explanation, say, Download the template there, edit the template, add a title, add your name, save the thing, do F5 in the browser, and so on and so forth. It really starts from scratch. A uh, useful thing is if you have a good text editor, configure that text editor to do some uh, snippets so you don't have to, <coughs> to type diff, class, slide, and so on, or copy and paste all of the time. I have some snippets I say slides and it gives me a, a sample slide and snippets for essentially anything to save myself typing. Download a template. That's the promised tar.gzip. You can download that. And that has the necessary files and nothing more. It's a presentation template, which is a single HTML file. No web scripting, Python, PHP, or whatever needed. What else does it have? It has slidey presentation files. So it has some images which are used. It has some CSS and some JavaScript. And I think some demo graphics as well, the bullets and so on. You download that. You have the video tutorial. It's rather easy to get started. The only file you really need to edit is the slidey presentation.html. And then you add your company style, your company theme. You add the features you want as you go. And then as you go, you go wild and enjoy it. So to get into the summary, if Keith will ever show up here, Slidey allows you to do anything you could do on a website. Just a second. Could you maybe go look for the largest guy here? Sure. OK, sure. you did that. Awesome, yeah, maybe the lunch did something bad to him. Who knows? <laughs> um, it requires at least basic HTML. So you don't need to be afraid of starting with Slidey. I did that years ago. I knew already a few things, yes? Probably more than a few, but to get started is easy. You get the template, you edit the template, you're done. Of course, it doesn't do all the things you've seen here, but you would probably not need all the things you've seen in this presentation if you need one of them. You Google that presentation. I'll also show you the link in a moment. And then you look at it, look at the slide you want, hit F12 in any decent browser like Chromium, Firefox, and so on. Click on the feature you want to investigate. Look at how it's done. If you really need help, just drop me an email, and 
you, you'll get along. It really is not that hard. What remains to be done, really, it's up to you. Try it out. And then you're in it and improve it if needed. So some acknowledgments are necessary because I've shown videos from the Blender Foundation. I think I've changed. It wasn't Big Buck Bunny anymore. But for legal reasons, I have to add them. And thanks to the W3C for not only doing Slidey, but doing all the nice features that the web supports in terms of standards. If you have questions, I have like, what is it? Three minutes-ish until Keith will appear and do his presentation, obviously. If we run out of time, you drop an email to gerald at senaclan.eu. You can also note that site, the senaclan.eu. On that site, you will find the presentation, including its source code. I'll show that for a moment. It's not a very pretty site. So, senaclan.eu, and then you have to add Tilda Gerald. The easier thing to, to find it is, my last name is Santa Claus. All my life, people called me Santa Claus, which is long to write. And Santa Claus, how is Santa Claus called in short? Santa. So if you want to find Santa, what do you do? You say find-santa.eu, and you find the site as well. <laughs> Good. Now you found Santa. That's at least something. You go on presentations. You look for slidey and you've got the presentation, including that source code. So now I have about two minutes for questions until Keith comes in. And go ahead. Go wild. Are there any questions? Do you want to see a slide again? Do you have a question about a feature, how it's done? I only used open source for essentially everything besides, of course, the sites that I showed. Almost always Firefox. Just now I did Chromium. Why? Because yesterday night was between midnight and, and uh, yeah, sometime before 1 a.m. I had to code and hack some nasty JavaScript, which does the, let's go to that slide. It's another feature with a table of contents so we can navigate. And we have the product demo slide here. It is a rather simple script. It says, if the tab is open, go to it. If not, Memorize that it's open and open it. So I click on it and go there. If it's not open, still works. In theory, in practice, I hacked it at midnight, so <laughs> I ate it away probably. So it's having a reference which not exists. So, wow. Oh, there we go. Just kind of slow. And this I needed to, to hack together. And since it's a very, very crude hack, like seven lines of JavaScript, I'm not too sure it works in all browsers. I hacked this one in, Fire in uh, Chromium. It worked in Chromium. I'll improve it when I get the time. So I think Firefox has a security feature where it doesn't want you to go to the other tab. So you have to configure it or whatever. Um, are there any websites where you can get other kinds of things? Um, one thing that's really cool is LMGTFY. You know the site? Dot com. I'll show you. It really helps you more than me telling you anything here. Uh, slidey presentation examples. Get link. I'll show you the link in a moment. I know that it comes kind of rude, but you're all young, so you'll understand the fun. I just love that site. This is so cool. Oh. <laughs> And it even clicks on search for you, and then you'll get the results. So there are probably a few, but uh, usually I don't get my ideas from slidey presentations. I get my ideas from any website. So I see something on a website. As long as Keith is not here, I can keep talking, if that's OK. <laughs> um, so if, if I see anything on a website that I think is really cool, then I copy it. For example, D3, uh, my company, so one of the companies I work for at the moment, it's called Revel. They allowed me to do uh, some of my first presentation today during work time because it was also used inside the company. And they have really nice advanced charts in their software. I said, oh, these charts are really cool. How are they done? D3. So what am I going to do? I do D3 in my presentation as well. Uh, so I, I didn't get the feature out of a another slidey presentation, but out of any website, out of any web-based product. 
Does that answer your question? You know, I always wanted to use that, that LMGTFY link. I would never dare because usually it's my boss is asking me and I, <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, it, it really depends on how you do it. So if it's done in PHP, Python, whatever, you can make it server-side, generate it, and hide it sort of well. Uh, I do general presentations about open source, open technologies, and so on. Uh, so everything I have is on my website. And then how you do it technology-wise, if you pull the data out of a database on demand, if you have a login page to access it, it's up to you. You can do anything you can do on a site. Or if you want to use cookies on the client, go for it if you need to. If you want to store everything client-side with HTML5 technologies, go for it. Download everything it, so it's faster on the next run, it's, if that answers your question. Well, almost. almost. Well, si since you don't have to even have PHP or Python, you can use any free web host. So you can Google free web hosting uh, services, find one which is sort of decent. Uh, I think if you're at a university, you usually have some web space. You can, if you need it really big, uh, hire a server at Amazon. If you want to go small, you can go for a plan where you pay a few euros and have a decent large amount of web space. If you really want just one, uh, one presentation, take a free web hoster. Also works. So here I have localhost slash and so on. So I do it locally for the simple reason if I keep it local, internet breaks down. Not just my machine's internet, but everything breaks down. Then I have the presentation somewhere on me. I can run it on any PC locally. Uh, Feature-wise, you may run in some trouble. For example, here I use uh, special web fonts from Google, which I like, which are open and free to use. If I run it local as file with a file URL, then Firefox will not allow me to use the local fonts which are stored on disk. Chromium at the moment does allow you to do the local fonts. This would also work on Firefox because I have a local web server here, and then Firefox says it's OK. I actually also use an additional trick here. I say, if the URL is localhost, show more details than if it's not localhost. So I can, for certain presentations in, in small, gr closed groups, I can show material which I may not be allowed to host on my server. So I, I can add images, for example, which are OK to show in a small audience privately, but are not OK to reshare, depending on the licenses. So that's one of the things you always have to worry about, independent of presentation tool. Just don't picture Google anything. Download the pictures because you can. Then you run in trouble. So you, you need to clear the rights. Other questions? We have so much time for questions today. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. <laughs> Nothing? Amazing. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'd say we close a little bit ahead of time. If Keith still comes, that'd be grand. But uh, let's do a 30 seconds if you have never used, honestly, disclaimer, his tool, which is essentially the same. But it does a few things that uh, slightly doesn't do out of the box. So it's responsive, meaning if your, if your browser window gets smaller, the resolution gets smaller, it rewraps in a nicer way, and it can reorganize the context, it can change the content, it can change the diagrams. I thought about adding that to the presentation today because, of course, you can do it in Slidey. Simple responsive web design. You just say, if uh, in CSS, if you have media with more than 1,024 pixels, if you have media with more than 1,400 pixels, show slightly different content, use slightly different CSS. That works in Slidey. You just have to do it yourself. And our Slidey, that tool from Keith, can kind of do it out of the box. Then I thought I'd, I didn't want to steal anybody the show, so I'd, I didn't add those features, but it's possible. All right, so thanks for your attention, and enjoy the Linux days. <laughs>